Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. Today I'd like to take a closer look at the tugboat. We can go into the design, the construction, the gear on board, and the electronics. So let's get started. These four models are scaled at one half inch to the foot. The tugboat is 34 inches on deck. The beam is 11 inches and the draft is four inches. The model has a reverse bow, a deep fine entry, a long run to the hull, a wide counter, a fantail stern with a reverse transom. All in, batteries included, ready to run, the model weighs 10 pounds. It's a modified version of an earlier Haven design called Shenandoah. The Shenandoah hull was widened here on the counter to provide more stability at high speed turns. The blue line on the model represents the wave shape at hull speed. There's a buildup of water forward, but on a narrow bow. Aft, there is another wave buildup which supports the after end of the boat. Here is where a widened counter is very important because it allows the boat to stand up on its feet when doing turns at hull speed. For low speed, we have a large rudder for increased maneuverability. Up top, we've got an anchor on a davit. The anchor made from epoxy and copper strips. Jewelry, necklace, chain. Railing stanchions are cotter pins. Portholes are grommets. Ladders are skewers with toothpick rungs. The little life ring is basswood cut from two different sizes of hole saw. The stack is the center of a paper roll. The vents here were made of party flutes. The little doors have three hinges made of wire twisted over. Masts are made of doweling. Little blocks are made of stir sticks with toothpick shafts and small nylon bearings on uh, pulleys on the inside that turn. Oars inside of the lifeboat made of stir sticks. Up top, navigation lights made of uh, Christmas decorations. A searchlight made from a plumbing end cap, a horn made from a golf tee. Let's turn on the lights and look at it at night. Superstructure and decks were made of basswood. The hull was constructed over a jig. Basswood boards were twisted and clamped into place. Fiberglass resin was used to coat the exterior of the hull to make it rigid. The hull was removed from the jig and the interior was coated with fiberglass resin. On the interior, another coat of white gel coat was added to make it smooth and clean looking. On the outside of the hull, the polyester resin was sanded with 80 grit sandpaper. Next, a multi-purpose primer sealer latex was painted onto the exterior surfaces of the hull and keel and on the inside above the deck 
and inside the bulwark. After the latex primer was applied, wood glue could be used to uh, uh, add on uh, an enlarged gunnel, uh, railings, uh, little ribs inside the bulwark. Outdoor glue sticks very well to primer. The primer sticks very well to polyester resin. And I finish the surfaces on the hull, below the water, the deck, um, uh, superstructure, all of it covered with varathane. To save time on future models, I decided to make an all fiberglass version of this hull. There is a deck flange and a gunnel at the same height as the deck. This fiberglass hull weighs in at four pounds. It should make life easier in the future. The rudder shoe is secured by two three millimeter bolts and nuts. The rudder shoe then swivels off and on. There is a left hand and a right hand propeller that counter rotate. There's a stainless steel shaft tube, a sealed roller bearing in the end of the tube, a propeller dog, a three blade nylon 42 millimeter diameter prop, a lock nut secured to a three millimeter stainless shaft. I use a Dumbork 2.4 gigahertz transmitter and receiver. It has six channels and they work on RC car, RC boat, and RC tank. These are reliable and have all the features I'm looking for. Slow forward. Fast forward. Slow reverse. Fast reverse. Fully adjustable rudder. Rudder trim is adjustable. Everything fully proportional. Deck hatches are secured with cotter pins placed at a 45 degree angle. Hatch and cabin lift off in two pieces. The hatches are large enough to get your hands in to remove batteries and electronics and also to lubricate the uh, shaft tubes with marine grease. You have to have enough room in there to pump this little grease gun. There are 14 brass screws that secure the deck to the deck flange. The deck is removed in one piece. This area here, at the top of the deck flange and inside the bulwark, this area has been primed with latex and covered with varathane. But the interior of the hull is unwaxed gel coat, and as you can see, the hull has no ribs or, or obstructions. Three pounds of steel weights were required, internal ballast to bring the trim down to the water line. There are two 12 volt DC motors, about 35 turn. The can size is 540. There's a universal joint, a three millimeter shaft, a shaft collar, a roller bearing in the end of the shaft tube, and further down a two millimeter hole to accept the lubrication grease gun. 
there's a three position motor mount that is epoxy directly onto the gel coat. Port and starboard are two 3000 milliamp hours 7.2 volt high power batteries. Further aft is a 320 amp 12 volt DC electronic speed control. This speed control will run one or two motors. It also has a built-in fan. It's located in a small box. The small box contains the on-off switch and the dumb bork receiver. Further aft is a geared servo motor linked up to the arm on the rudder shaft. The rudder shaft is inside a rudder tube. The tube has a lubrication hole port for the grease gun and sealed roller bearings at the upper and lower end. The transmitter and boat are now turned on. So here's forward. Here's reverse. And here's the rudder. When the wiring is disconnected, this control box can be taken out. And if used with this transmitter, three or four different boats could be run with the same combination. So that was a close-up of the tugboat. Thank you for visiting RC Workboat Haven.